guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. Thank you for hopping on checking out what I'm up to today. So in today's video, I was actually in need of some smaller windows. So stumbled across a barn sale. She had a ton of windows. They were very reasonably priced. Yes, they were always dirty. <laughs> Usually always old windows are stored out in the barn. Nice that we had a power washer that we could get the first layer of dirt in the paint off. But let me share with you how I make beautiful home decor for your walls using windows. Did you look at all these treasures? $3 a piece and the larger one was $5. Though, no y'all, I'm not going to make over every single one of these for you in this video. I'm just going to actually do two. But they all needed to be power washed before we are going to put them in storage. So the nice thing about the power washer is not only is it getting all the dirt, debris, cobwebs, whatnot, but it also was getting all that loose paint off also. So then I just set them in the sun to dry and now I'm just picking out the couple that I want to transform for you all today. Since I power washed them, there's no sanding that I need to do. It got all the chippy all off and now they're nice and dried in the sun. So now I'm just going to tape off that glass of the window before moving on with some Kills Paint and Primer to brighten these up with two coats. Now that my two coats of paint have dried, now I'm going back in and distressing it. <laughs> Seems silly, doesn't it? But that just freshens it right up. So just some 220 sandpaper. I just want to bring back some of that natural wood that was underneath, especially around the sharp edges. Now I'm going to give the glass some good cleaning. It still kind of has some kind of a caulking around the front. I'm used to the caulking on the back, but there was some kind of a caulking that somebody had put around all three of these windows so I'm not sure if all the windows have it but it's just like a little lip almost like a soup uh, well maybe like a hot glue I guess but I'm going to go ahead I just soaked it in some super clean and now I'm trying to scrape it off and because I put a protective coating backing on these windows I didn't feel the need to paint the back of it but I do need to make sure that that glass is good in there. As you see, this window, most of the caulk has fallen off. So there's these little glazing points that you can stick in the wi window to tighten up and make sure that it's on there securely. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick those glazing po um, points in there, make sure I have my window good and clean, and I'll probably chip away any more of that glazing that I can, that caulking that's just kind of, I don't want you to see that through the window. I'm sure at first glance you're like, oh my gosh, she got the window done. Yeah, this is some simple window transformations. These are a perfect size for the decoupage paper that I get from Piglet's Closet and from Zazzle. So that is actually what I've been looking for, something that I don't always have to do the mirror effect on because not everybody's going to want the mirror effect. So yes, and these barn papers, I just reordered some more of the barn papers. I, I cannot keep them in our booth as soon as I get them behind a window. So highly recommended if you can get your hands on some window to get some of these barn prints if you live in a farming community like I do. So the first thing I need to do is they come folded up. It's just how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and iron out that crease just using some parchment paper and a no steam iron. For the adhesive that I use to attach it to the window, I just use Mod Podge and I'm just kind of eyeballing seeing what I want you to see most of the barn. So that's how I centered it. So that's why it kind of looks like it's overlapping on one side more than the other because I want you to see all of that beautiful red barn. So you just put a nice thin layer on. It always looks thick because it's white, but it does dry. So, yep. So let's go ahead and brush it on and then just very gingerly as because once that paper gets wet it is rippable <laughs> this is the 18 weight pound decoupage paper zazzle has a 10 pound and a 18 pound the 10 pound tissue is more like a tissue paper and the 18 is a little bit thicker not quite a wrapping paper but it's it's a nice it's a very nice paper for using what us crafters like to use it for
I have been liking misting the paper down as I'm putting it on the window. That seems to help one get the wrinkles out and then I really can kind of stuff it into the corner. But the paper, once it's wet, is very rippable. But I find if I just have a balled up piece of saran wrap that my chances of ripping it are a lot less. And then I like to go in with some scissors and release that pressure of the corner so it gets a nice tight fit as it's drying. And now that it's almost completely dry, I'm going to go back in with a metal ruler and exacto knife. I don't need to cut it flush because yet again, I'm putting a backing on this. I just want to cut some of that excess off. Backing that I use is just contractor's paper. We buy it at, in a large roll. We use it to cover up our workshop tables along with all my wall decor. I usually always back it. So just a bead of hot glue along the seam and then I just go ahead and put a I try to guesstimate when I'm cutting it off the roll to cover up the back. Then to cut it flush all I use is some 220 sandpaper. I just go back and forth until it has cut all the way through. So it's been set, suggested to me a couple times about wetting the paper from behind and then drying it. Um, after I started to wet it, it started to wrinkle and I'm like, you know what? I just like my paper as is because <laughs> now it kind of looked more of a hot mess and maybe as it dries, it will tighten. But anyway, we're going to move on to putting the, um, hanging system on. So I get highlight hole hangers from Amazon. I put two on each side and then we hang it with some 17 gauge wire so that it's nice and strong. And then the thing about old windows or old frames or anything like that after you get your hanging system on you really want to give a good pull to make sure that that's not in some wood that's not as strong so I always like to give it a good tug to make sure that those are in there nice and tight. I'm almost finished with this window but there's a few little details I want to tweak. So the bottom of this window had some metal on it and then one side I just couldn't get to lay down so it was leaving a sharp edge and I just recently had picked up these tacks that had numbers on them so I decided I was going to try to tack them <laughs> in which was not a there, there wasn't a lot of things to hold on to to get them into metal but well, once I worked with it just a little bit and got the hammer going, and it, yes, it kept falling out of my needle nose pliers, but I was determined to get two of those in there. Then the next thing that I want to do, I'm just going to take some of this Dixie Bell Barn Red paint, and where the wood is showing, where I sanded it, I just really want to make the frame match that red barn just a little bit. So I'm just ever so slightly with just a little bit of paint, just taking some of that barn red and just accentuating those sharp corners to tie this frame in with that picture. Now next is this two pane window and I do like two pane windows because you can put something decorative on the one side and then you can put a stencil on the other side and I absolutely love the birds on the branch and I love this paper because there's two so you'll get two usages out of this. Nope I'm not going to put layer on top of layer I'm just going to put one birds on the branch on the bottom of this. Now this sheet does not fit the whole window. So what I'm going to go in, I'm just taking some water and a paintbrush and I'm just going to tear where I have the water. And that's just going to leave a jagged, uneven edge, but it's just going to make a nice distressed edge that's not going to be that crisp paper anymore. 
jumped on the birds on the branch a few times and I've just put the paper with just window showing. But this time, I just recently got this grungy floral. Ooh, I like this a lot. So I think the colors coordinate perfectly and I'm going to use that on the back behind the birds on the branch. So the first thing I need to do though is glue on my birds on the branch. So I still have plenty to work on why it's drying. So just like before, I'm just, I don't need to cut it flush. I just want to cut that excess paper off. And then I'm going to put that backing on just the bottom half. The, the top half is going to have some vinyl lettering, but I just want to protect that paper on the back. So same thing as I did before with the contractor's paper. Now I'm going to go to my Cricut. I'm going to type out our blessed nest pick out a font that I like. I, when I'm doing a stencil, I like it to be a little bit thicker. Sometimes when you get too thin of swirls, it's really hard to transfer. Uh, transfer. So yep, now I'm just going to size it appropriate, fill up as much of that space that I can. So I use the Oracle 651 permanent vinyl. So yes, I think this definitely goes with that bird on the branch. Just putting pieces of masking tape where I measured off that should be center of the window. Now for the hanging system on this window, I just put my eyelet hooks closer together. The wire is still that 17 gauge. These eyelet hooks will withstand the weight of this heavy window with all that glass and the wire also. So I really want to make sure that one, when um, you're hanging it, you don't see the wire from the front, but I also need it to be weight appropriate for this heavy of a window. we're going to switch it up a bit. This window is not going to get any of the decoupage paper on it. We, I actually have another plan for this, but first, <laughs> whatever that caulking was that they put on the other windows, there was a big strip on this one that I actually had to use the heat gun to try to get it off. With a little bit of work and a little bit of elbow grease and a little bit of time, I finally got that big strip of glue off or caulk, I guess. I'm not really sure what it was. So I actually picked up some sacks. Now this is an alfalfa sack. So for a dollar at a garage sale, I picked up this. I love that it was already aged. It's a little bit war 
and then actually once I cut the seam off it actually is folded over so it won't have a seam in the middle so I'm going to go ahead and get it opened up and my hopes of course was that it was going to fit underneath the window that I already got painted up painted up and it does so now I need to see how much of this wrinkles will iron out and I did kind of want to keep that stampage, that wording, but I'm going to be doing some vinyl lettering on the front, so it would be distracting. If it was just an image, maybe like, I don't know, a chicken or a cow or something like that, it would have been different. But since it was wording, it would be a lot of wording going on, so I flipped it over and used the other side. That's why you see the wording now. To attach it to the back, I'm just going to go ahead and staple it on. I could have hot glued it, but I was afraid that I would start shifting it as I'm trying to pull it onto the hot glue. So I felt like if I use the staple gun and did the four corners first, that I can kind of keep it nice and tight. <laughs> And yep, that had that same weird caulking around the front of the window. So one more good cleaning with my Norex cloth. So this is another saying when I put it in the booth, I have really good luck reselling it, especially, and I have done actually drop cloth that I tea stained dyed before. So it was nice getting that dollar piece of fabric. So just some basic fonts that is nice and bright on the vinyl that you can see the old homestead bed and breakfast where you make both makes people giggle. So that is what I'm gonna be putting on the front of the window. So this is a large, I tried to make it as large as I could to fit up the most space. And I, I prefer just cutting out on one mat <laughs> other than trying to add and get everything all in lined. I'm actually just using the Duck brand contact paper as my transfer tape. I only have small transfer tape right now. I don't do a ton of cutting out with a Cricut as much as I used to, especially since we have transfers and decoupage paper and wonderful IOD stamps and redesign. Yep, there's just so much things we can, us crafters can do now. So now I'm just going to measure off my window, making sure that I have it pretty much centered, putting that masking tape that I know where I need to line it up with. I should have seasoned my contact paper that I'm using as my transfer tape because it was so sticky it was trying to take my vinyl letters off so sometimes when you put them I had tons of areas that I could have dusted with that that actually helps it release so why I'm struggling here is because the it is so sticky
So thank you so much for watching today's video and let me know down below, have I inspired you to take a second glance at those old windows? And yes, decoupage paper is just an easy way to make a old window into some beautiful wall decor. So I hope I have inspired you in any way and give me, of course, give me a comment down below which one of the items, which one of the windows that I made over were your favorite. So again, thanks for watching guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when you uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye.